In this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to paint Cadian fatigues and armour, weapons and accessories, and finish up by showing you how to paint some different skin tones. Welcome to Tabletop Ready, I'm Michael and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to paint Cadian shock troops. I'll put the brushes and paints I use in this tutorial in the description below, as well as putting them on the screen when I use them. If you enjoy my content, please give this video a like and let me know in the comments below. And if you want to help support what I do, see my tutorials early, and even see what I'm up to behind the scenes, you can become a channel member, or you can join my Patreon, which I'll link in the description. I really appreciate any help and support and it goes a long way to growing the channel and allows me to keep improving the content I create for you. And I massively appreciate the continued support from these amazing people as well. I've built my Cadians and sub-assemblies which I find really helps when it comes to painting. This allows us to paint areas properly that we wouldn't normally be able to because parts are in the way. For these Cadians I've kept the heads, weapons and anything that goes on a back separate. And when it comes to undercoating the Cadians I chose to use Andrew Dust Spray as this colour is the main colour for the fatigues. So I wanted to undercoat all these parts with Andrew Dust Spray but unfortunately I ran out so I actually switched to Wraith Bone Spray but it's not a massive problem. So during the tutorial you'll probably see some that have been sprayed with Xandri Dust and things that have been sprayed with Wraith Bone but don't worry too much it doesn't really matter. To make this tutorial easier to follow along with I'll be breaking it down into the following chapters. Basic colours first and definition. Let's finish what we started. Materials and accessories and I'll finish with how I paint skin tones. All the steps and techniques I'll be showing you can be used to paint an entire squad at the same time and this is called batch painting. So rather than painting each Cadian individually to completion, I find it better to complete a step across multiple miniatures before moving on to the next step. This is also good to do because it helps with consistency and actually getting a squad finished. I want to start out by blocking in some of the main colours in the first section so we can apply the same wash to all of them at the same time. The first colour we're going to paint is Andrew Dust and this is going to be for all the fatigues on Arcadians. And when you painted the fatigues we can get the base colour painted for the armour as well. And we always want to work towards getting a nice smooth finish when painting our layers. And to do this it's a good idea to thin your paints first of all and I find an equal amount of water does the trick. Make sure to take your time and try not to go over anywhere you've already painted to prevent creating any unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. And because we thinned our paint, you'll find that it's not going to cover in just one coat. So wait until your first layer is dry and then repeat the process of painting until you've got that solid colour we're after. The last colours to get painted are Iron Hand Steel and Rune Lord Brass. No doubt while you're painting all these base colours you are going to make mistakes, but that's okay. You can just use some of the colours you've been using and neaten up. We're painting all these colours first so we can create some definition and give them a wash at the same time. The wash we're going to be using is made with an equal amount of both Agrax Earthshade and Lamy Medium. The Lamy Medium is going to weaken the strength of the wash so it doesn't affect our colours too much, while still giving us the definition we want when it's dry. When applying the wash, we want to use enough to cover the miniature comfortably so we don't get too much pooling in areas. But if you do find that is happening, don't worry because you can just use your brush and soak up the excess. And then make sure to let the wash fully dry before moving on to doing any of the other steps. You can see when it is dried, it has created the definition we wanted, so now we can work on finishing these different areas. Now that we've created some definition and started painting all these different areas, let me show you how to get these different details finished. Let's start with the fatigues by painting the raised details and folds using Xandri Dust. This is going to brighten these areas helping with that definition and it's also helpful in neatening up any messy looking areas created by the wash. And when you've done that we can start looking at doing some highlighting and because we're going to be doing quite a bit throughout this tutorial, let me tell you some things that I know help me. 
I like to keep a brush separate first of all just for highlighting because I want to know it's going to still have a good tip when I come to use it. I also find I don't thin the paints as much because we want a strong colour without having to do multiple passes like we would when layering. And finally I like to remove excess paint from my brush on some kitchen paper which helps prevent those thick blobby lines and giving us more control. For the highlights on the fatigues let's use some screaming skull. Just take your time going around your KD and painting thin lines and all the raised folds and details you want to be more prominent. It's time to work on the armour and weapon casings next and just like the fatigues we want to spend some time neatening up the armour and painting the flat panelled areas with some castellan green the colour we started with. Whilst doing this step make sure to leave the darker shaded areas still visible in all the recesses and around the details to keep that definition we want. To highlight the armour we can do two stages of highlights which work really well when it comes to more industrial flat surfaces as opposed to materials like the fatigues. The first highlight is going to be a chunky highlight using Lauren Forest and this is going to be quite a thick line. I'm almost using the side of the brush to get the thickness I'm after. Paint this highlight along all the edges on the armour and weapon panels which will help bring out all the shapes of these different areas. Next we want to paint an edge highlight on these same areas. I'm using Nurgling Green and to make painting these highlights a little easier we can use the side of our brush and run it along these edges to paint the highlights. For the areas you can't do this then it's just a case of taking your time painting a thin line along all the edges where you want that highlight. Highlighting does take time and practice but it's always worth the effort in the end. Let's finish this section by highlighting all the metallic details with Stormhost Silver. Remember these steps can be used to batch paint your miniatures. We're now ready to work on painting some of the smaller details on Arcadians, so I'll go through these details separately. For all the black details like boots and belts, start with some of bad and black. Paint a chunky highlight using Eshin Grey and finish these areas with a fine highlight using Dawnstone. Any badges and all the little skull and wing decorations are painted with Corex White to begin with. When you have that done, apply some Apothecary White Contrast, making sure to let this fully dry before highlighting these details with some Ulthwing Grey. If you built your Cadians with plasma weapons like I did, then start with some Stegodon Scale Green first of all. Next you want to paint all those raised ridges with Temple Guard Blue. And to finish the plasma coils you can use some Ulthwing Grey to highlight the corners of each ridge. The last accessory I want to show you how to paint are any visors on goggles you may find some of the Cadians wearing. Start by painting the visor with some Stegodon Scale Green. Now mix in a little Ulthwing Grey and paint along the top of the visor. And to finish the visor paint two small dots of Ulthwing Grey in the top left area of each circular section. Now I've gone over the steps and techniques to get the clothes and gear painted, I want to talk about painting their skin. Cadians are made up of all different kinds of people. The galaxy is a big place after all, so you want to be able to paint all kinds of different skin tones. So you're going to find yourself painting a lot of skin when doing a Cadian army. Um, and to be honest, painting skin is probably one of my weaker areas when painting. So I wanted to come up with sort of a quick overall way of painting any kind of skin tone that you want. Uh, because they're all going to kind of follow the same sort of steps and recipe. You're going to paint your base colour, then you're going to do a wash for definition, build up that colour again and then a highlight. So I'll go through the steps now and you'll see. First to light skin tone, start with Kids Left Flesh. For a mid-tone you can use some Bane Blade Brown and for a darker tone you can start with some Gawthor Brown. You can then give all these different colours some definition using a Reichland Flesh Shade Glaze Wash. Bring out the details again with the same colour you started with. And then finish the skin using a lighter colour like Screaming Skull and Bane Blade Brown for the highlights. Now it's time to put all the parts together and I like to use some super glue for this because it won't ruin the paint. Arcadian Shock Troops are now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to go away and paint your own. I've got plenty of other tutorials on the channel 
including an alternative colour scheme for Cadians. So make sure you go check that out. Thank you so much for sticking around, I really enjoy making these tutorials and hope you find them useful. You can really help the channel by liking the video and commenting below. And remember you can also support me at Patreon where you can see my tutorials early and it also makes a massive difference in helping me make them and getting the supplies and miniatures I need for them. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video. Paint skin, paint skin, paint skin, paint skin, paint skin. Paint and skin, paint and skin, paint and skin. I've said it enough.